right, so we wanted to talk really briefly about uh, tools for the plastering. Basically, all you need is a scoop to get the plaster out of the bucket, a hawk to hold the plaster, this being the hawk that you actually set it on, and a simple trowel. What silo trowel, that could be a little bit more complicated. A basic trowel, this is generally called a swimming pool trowel. It has rounded edges around it to make it easier for uneven surfaces or rounded surfaces. Uh, that's why it's called a swimming pool trowel. However, for the beginning plasterer, it can make it a lot easier to get fewer marks, fewer lines in your work if you pick up a rounded trowel. Uh, the other thing that's really nice about these trowels is they have a very short bridge, so the edges are quite flexible, and that's also something that can be a benefit. Uh, this would be sort of a, a basic finishing trowel for concrete work. It has a longer bridge, the edges are a little bit stiffer, uh, but if you are looking at trowels from, say, a big box store, some of the things you need to watch out for, make sure the blade is flat. Uh, there are often times when the quality isn't as great and it'll have a big cup in it uh, on the back side that makes it very difficult to plaster with if you're working on a, a flat wall, and it shouldn't be that way. So make sure you check that before you get one. Um, this one, it's got a slightly wider blade. This is actually more of a plastering trowel than a concrete working trowel. This is what you want to try to find uh, when you're looking for one, and they come in different lengths. Uh, at the beginning, you want to start with, start with a shorter length. It's going to make it easier to hold uh, material on it, and you don't have to have as much strength and much skill when you're trying to spread a certain amount of plaster. Uh, then, from there, you get into different specialty trowels, this being more for uh, Venetian line work or thin coat plaster. It's going to be a much more expensive trowel, much more of a, a professional type of trowel. Um, and then uh, they come in multiple sizes, depending on the, the wall or the project or the, the step that you're doing. And then uh, there's also different styles of trowels. These are Japanese style trowels. Uh, they come in different thicknesses, different sizes. Um, and all of them, it really comes down to what are you the most comfortable with uh, when you're applying. So if you have the opportunity to try out different trowels in a workshop or you have somebody else that has some trowels, hold them, get a feel for what you like, and then just go for it from there. All right, so one of the things that you may find you need to do, and generally it is during warmer weather, hotter weather, um, when you might want to pre-wet, or if you find that it's been it's quite difficult for you to spread the, wet, the plaster, sorry, spread the plaster as you're going and you want to keep a wet edge. You might want to pre-wet your base coat. Generally, I don't like to do that unless it's very hot outside or very dry and um, there's enough moisture in your top coat to accomplish it. However, when you pre-wet, you only want to get a little bit of water into that surface. You don't want to over-wet the surface. It doesn't take much. And that sort of prepares the surface for the plaster coming into it. It helps to keep the moisture in the plaster versus going into your base coat. But as you notice, I don't want to over wet it. With some plasters, you have to really wet it down with the clay plaster. You just want enough in there that it helps make it a little bit easier to spread. So now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I've got my hawk. This is what the plaster goes on to as your plaster. I've got my trowel that I'm going to be spreading the plaster with. And I'm going to scoop some plaster onto my hawk. And before I keep going, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of what I call uh, prime the hawk so it holds the plaster a little bit easier. So now I've got my scoop. Um, got a little bit of plaster on my hawk. And uh, what I'll do is I'll start with the uh, professional's way to take material off the hawk and get it onto the wall. You're going to take it off the front side, you get a nice even bead, and generally you're going to spread it up. Now, as you're spreading the plaster, initially your angle stays quite steep, and slowly as you come up the wall, you're going to relax that angle. Uh, that way you're spreading the plaster onto the wall and not just moving it.
so I covered trowel technique where you'd be using a hawking trowel, you know, taking it off the front side, nice even spreading. However, a lot of times that's can be intimidating, so I'm gonna go through some really basic ways to go from the hawk to the wall um, and from the hawk to the trowel to give you some better ideas. Also, let's say your base coat isn't as nice as you thought it could be. You can always come back, take the front edge of your trowel, scrape off any high points to eliminate possible you know, ridges in your finished coat. So you can simply go through, hit those high spots. Don't do that with your nicest trowel. That could be with one of your beginning trowels. All right, so now, um, if you still want to, a pre-wet, again, very lightly. I'm not gonna pre-wet the whole thing, so I don't think it's necessary right now. But just to give you an idea of what pre-wet means, just a basic, lightly damp spray down. All right, so we've got our hawk already primed. It's got some material on it. I'm gonna really load it up. And again, this will be basic. You're a little intimidated about going from the hawk to the trowel to the wall. Go straight from the hawk to the wall. Take it, spread it in it. Now, something that's going to happen is because you're putting so much material up there, your hawk and your trowel, your trowel is going to be loaded. So you can just take your trowel, scrape off the excess, scrape it back to the middle. Now we'll get it ready to do the next load. Now, here though, something that's very important is you want to make sure that any of that leftover, you don't want to leave it that thick. You want to make sure you move it to other areas or take it back off. Okay? So we're going to keep going. I work, if you notice, I'm spreading it to areas, nice stiff blades, stiff blades, stiff blades, and then when I get to an area that doesn't have any plaster, I start just flatten it out. All right, so during application, there might be some areas where you get a little bit too thin, a little bit too thick, and there's some indicators that show you when those, that, that, it, that it's occurring. Uh, if it's too thin, what you might end up with are either some chatter that you can see left behind from the trowel. Another one might be some drag marks from the sand itself because you can't cover the sand. It actually wants to drag into the finish. Another one will be if it's too thick, you'll have a, a very coarse uh, texture left on there and there'll be um, you know, some bubbles that are left behind. Those need to be worked out and spread to other areas or taken off and put back on your trap. All right, so as we've come across the wall, now we're coming into the corner. One of the first things that you want to accomplish is what many people will do is they'll take, they'll load their trowel and they take it right in the corner. What that does is that actually puts on too thick of a layer. So what I like to do is I will start away from the corner first, start spreading, get a little bit of the bead and then fill in that corner. That way it's much easier to control the thickness as you're working into that corner. So we've worked the main body and we're coming into this corner, this outside corner. It has a slight bull nose to it, 
And regardless of whether you're doing a 90 degree or a large bull nose, inch and a half bull nose, bull nose meaning a rounded corner, um, you want to still have some kind of a radius on that corner, regardless of the, the overall profile. So what I will do is I like to start with a certain amount of plaster on that edge. Take a fairly simplistic tool. It's basically a yogurt lid or a margin lid with that whole outside lip cut off. It shaped with a, a radius on the outside edge. And I can pull that down the corner. So basically I'm going to use this nice round tool. I'm going to push it into either side, keeping even pressure into the corner. Um, so that more of the pressure is in the corner than on the outside edge. And just shape that corner to match the profile that was there. See that leaves some semblance of the ridge there. And I'm gonna come back and initially do a light cleaning up. And at this point, you've got your initial shape. The plaster's a little too fluid to really do anything else. You just leave it alone, let some of that moisture come out, and come back and do the same thing with this trowel. Okay, so let's say I didn't do as good of a job as I was hoping. My finished coat, I've got a lot of texture that's there. What I can do is just take a sponge and my trowel that I've been using just lightly go over it. Now, there's a little bit of water in it. That's okay, you just, it's already fairly wet. You just wanna quickly go over. What that does, it helps even out that texture. And then you can go back with your trowel and slightly smooth it out. You don't wanna spend a lot of time doing that. So if there's a lot of really major variations, that's good, but if you're trying to really slick it out, it's not the best way to do it. You wanna wait and let some more of that water come out before you continue working it. All right, so let's say we're evening this out. Now, if you wanted a sponge uh, sand finish, you do the same thing. The difference is you just wouldn't cover it with a trowel. You leave it just like that. Now, we've got the plaster up. We've sort of sponged out all those irregularities, smoothed it out. If you want it that much more smooth, we could do what I call smoothing, leather hard smoothing. And what you want to be careful of is you don't want to overdo this point. It's very easy to overwork it, um, depending on how wet the clay is. So what you can do is you can check it. You can use your finger, press it in an area. If you're leaving a strong fingerprint or the plaster is still moving around under your finger pressure, it's still too wet. You want to avoid that area. But in other areas, it might be take pretty heavy finger pressure, just light um, movement of the plaster. That's what you're looking for. Once you do that, then you can take your trowel and you just want to do it a couple of times. You don't want to keep working in there. You just want to smooth it out because what happens is you squeeze the water to the surface. It's very easy to overwork it from there. So that would be smoothing. Um, and now what the next step would be is just let it dry and then the next day you're going to come back and compress.